Okay, we're going to try this one more time. Just tried it a minute ago and got interrupted. Had to take a call. Um, when it comes to the birth certificate, you ha it's a trust. And you have in the birth certificate, instead of just having a trustee and a beneficiary, you have two trustees and two beneficiaries. And when you have a trust that has two trustees and two beneficiaries, you have to understand that a trustee or, or any, nobody can hold two positions. They are either a trustee or a beneficiary. And when you have the birth certificate, in order to get over their bullshit, you have to claim it. You have to claim it or disown it, as if though it's not, it has nothing to do with you. You either have to call contract fraud or accept it and take that controlling position. You can never control it yourself because the birth certificate was created by the state. Therefore, they will always control it by its construct. But you can take position as the controlling person, as the controlling man. In other words, um, when you go to these, uh, you get pulled over for a traffic citation, you go into court, and you have not claimed that, the state is then in the trustee position, and you're in the beneficiary position. And what happens is the clerk, of course, the chief clerk, is the state trustee for that. And what he does is he assigns the judge as a trustee. Now, if he's trustee, and he assigns it to the judge, what's that make him? He's just switched positions. They're not caring about you as a beneficiary at all because you're actually not the beneficiary. You can only be beneficiary um, in, in matters by, of this by taking con, uh, a controlling position so they cannot use it against you. Or by taking a controlling position and collapsing it so that they have no access to it at all. But understand that a trustee cannot be a beneficiary at the same time. So in the birth certificate, when they have co-trustee and co-beneficiary, it's not for your benefit. It's for the state's benefit. So that when they can reposition somebody as a trustee, that repositions the beneficiary as well. You got three parties to it, and, and the three parties are the, the, the beneficiary, the liability, and the, and the trustee. And what they're doing is they're placing you as the liability. You're no longer the beneficiary. So understand this stuff and, and realize that when it comes to the birth certificate, you have an out. You have several outs. You, you can, you can um, not claim it at all and claim fraud because, in, in fact, in my, in my opinion, that's exactly what it is. Or you can do as the state says by its construct and follow their guidelines and take the position as durable power of attorney in fact and conduct the affairs of that estate as well as the positioning. See, when the state comes in as trustee, they have power of attorney. They have power of attorney and they can switch those positions within the trust, but they cannot move the trust from the public to the private side. And that's only done by the living man that can claim that same name. Them as trustees, they cannot claim the name. Only you as the beneficiary can claim that name. And that's the only benefit it has, is by claiming the name. And then durable power of attorney, in fact, so that you can move that estate out of the public and into a private trust to protect it. So that they can't use it against you. Or you can collapse it. And again, they can't use it against you because then there is no beneficiary. You're, you're, you're moving yourself away from that position of being beneficiary. And until you do that, the presumption of law is that you are. You are part of that construct because that name. And understand that when, when people talk about the uh, Vatican has the copyright, understand the Vatican only cop has, and, and I'm not sure if it's actually the, the uh, Vatican that holds the copyright. They, whoever owns that copyright owns the copyright to the product, not what's on it. In other words, they hold the, they hold the copyright to the form. 
They, they created a piece of paper with this funny boundary on it, or this fancy boundary uh, bounds on it, with the nice lines and the, and the little partitions and the sections where they put the information. The information can never be owned. It can be claimed, and then the only person that can claim it is the one with the same name. Period. Uh, the, the registrar of the state that signs the thing isn't claiming it. He's, he's, he's signing as liability. The governor signs as liability. They're the two liable parties that signed it. In contract law, they are party to it and not you. You only have a claim to the name. You can claim that name and then as po durable power of attorney, you have to follow up with durable power of attorney. And, and then you can reposition it. You can disposition it. You can move it from one place to another. And think about that. When, when people say dispo when you disposed of something, did you really get rid of it? No. When you disposed of your garbage, you moved it from your house to the outdoors. You moved it to a bin. And then somebody else came by and then moved it again. They took it from this position and put it in another position. They took it from this place and put it in another place. It's still there. And that's what you can do with that birth certificate. You can take control of it as a controlling person or a controlling man, but you can never have full control of it because the, the state created it. But as that man, you can then position it. You can then take it from where it's at and place it somewhere else. Or you can nullify it. You can collapse it. Once you collapse it, it's done. You put it in a position where it's in no longer of any use. Period. Otherwise, that public charitable trust still exists. You just put the portion of the public charitable trust that you claim in a non-use file. You put it in a file 13. That's all you did. Correct. It's not us. Correct. The government is the debtor. They are in debt because they're the ones that put their names on it as, as a government instrumentality to create money that only a man can do by his signature. His signature isn't on that birth certificate, but everything he creates after that is related to it unless he collapses it once he collapses that then that signature no longer relates to the state but strictly and solely to the private man until that birth certificate is collapsed that signature will always be connected to it it would always be related to it period understand this stuff folks as co-trustee or co-beneficiary you have to step up and take responsibility of one or the other, but you cannot be held responsible. You cannot be held liable for both positions. And that's basically what they're doing. When they, when they pull you over for a, a traffic violation and they send this ticket to court and the clerk, the chief clerk, assigns a, uh, a, an administrator as trustee, he is in fact a trustee because the, the, the clerk had the power of attorney assigned by the state who is the controlling factor of the the uh, public charitable trust who was given that authority by the United States Department of State who holds the original jurisdiction over estate uh, decedent estates and trust funds so they've just handed it down and handed it down and then when the, when you get pulled over the state then turns around and hands that down to the clerk of courts the chief clerk the power of attorney so that he can then assign whatever whatever administrator he thinks is going to be best for the case particularly in, inst in instances where it involves people like me who are constantly coming up and and doing this paperwork themselves they're they're handing this paperwork off to the the lowest judge when they have some 18 year old kid come in with his first traffic citation they're, they're handing it off to the lowest judge, uh, lowest administrator in there. But when you've got some experience and they have to have somebody that will sit down and start slamming that gavel and start threatening you with arrest, they're going to assign it to them. And that's why you got to really know this stuff before you walk into a court. 
I've been doing it for for 30 some years and gradually over that time getting more and more information until a couple years ago when they finally pulled me over and I'm done. I clearly clarified that I am in my private capacity with the placards that I put on my truck. And they don't like that language. They don't like it when you use language that, that isn't involving their language, that isn't involving their statutes, codes, rules, regulations, acts, edicts, ordinances, proclamations, declarations, and all this and that. When you use common words that they understand clearly, then they start sending you to the higher ups the, and, until you get to the, uh, the the boss of the whole thing, and he's the Article Three judge that you will end up hand, uh, handing the, your claim to. So, understand this stuff, people. When you have a trust that's got co-trustee and co-beneficiary, understand your part. If you're not part of it, then you're the liability. And they're going to hold you to it until you claim that part. You have to step up and claim that once or one way or another. It's a public charitable trust. And you went through a public education system. You go to the public hospitals. You go to uh, your, your dentist programs and everything. Um, free health programs. Your, your public cl uh, health clinics and stuff like that. You're using that public charitable trust. And they're going to hold you liable. Until you step up into the responsible part. And learn how to do the offsetting and the, all that with that, that public charitable trust known as the birth certificate. But you can only do that by being in one position. And that is durable power of attorney in fact of the name. You do not, you do not control the birth certificate. Somebody else has got a copyright and it was constructed through their, their codes and statutes. But you have a claim to the name, and once you claim that name and durable power of attorney thereof, you can tell them, okay, now I've claimed it, that has to either be collapsed or I'm going to move it to a private trust, one or the other. So understand this stuff and know your position, know your capacity. Without that, they're just going to keep using it against you. And they're just going to keep, just like the U.S. Department of State handed it off to the state, and then the state handed it off to the uh, clerk of courts, and then the clerk of courts handed it off to an administrator. Reach out and grab that motherfucker, and then hand it right back to him. Here's the person you're claiming you're, you're, you're charging. Here's the person that these charges are pending against. Deal with him. Deal with this person, not this man. I have nothing to do with it. So, the more you understand about um, the trust and how it's constructed and what your part in is, um, then you're, you're just going to continuously be abused by this commercial system every time you sign. Every time you sign a document, you're creating an, a financial instrument. That's the importance of the, the signature of the creditor. You're not signing as a debtor when you buy, when you sign that bank loan. You're signing as the creditor, and they're going to your birth certificate, public trust fund to get the get the money, and then you're not claiming it. When you get a loan, as soon as you sign for it, can I have my receipt now? Every receipt you get is the original issue discount. You go to Walmart and they give you a cash receipt. That's your original issue discount. If you're claiming to be a citizen and filing taxes, save every last one of those and turn them in as your original issue discount. Fill out a 1099 for every last one of them. You have to. This isn't, um, this isn't rocket scientist, science either. either. You, you know about... Um, um, once you learn about power of attorney and durable power of attorney and stuff, you can then turn around and use your fiduciary form 56 to sign power of attorney to an IRS agent to take care of that shit. And by law, they have to. Understand this stuff. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not always scruffy looking there, uh, uh statical. I read your post earlier. You, you you said you just got by got fired by your vet for you signing uh, your dog's dental release with UCC one dash three hundred eight. It means they no longer want to conduct business with you. Um, they're denying you. <laughs> yes, 
And, and, and you mentioned something earlier. Let me see if I can scroll back, Stanico. You, you mentioned something about autograph. When you autograph into court syntax style, last name first, you show as executor of account. You can, then you can appoint the judge as trustee. Yes, um, when it comes down to language, you know, I was talking about simple words earlier. Um, when, when it comes down to uh, signing documents and stuff, all the documents that I enter into, into court, I autograph. I don't put a signature. And that autograph is just one name, and that's my, my, my given Christian name. Capital K, lowercase e, lowercase i, lowercase t, lowercase h. And then I have a red ink thumbprint. And it's always done in red ink. The name and the thumbprint in red ink. And that thumbprint from my right thumb is attached to the H of that, that name. And that is your seal. No one else on the planet at any time. Now, yesterday, the day before, tomorrow, the next day, or any time in the future or the past can ever give that same form can never give that same art form period let's see yeah and and, and rescission is another good one um anytime you sign something people have this thing i came across this the other day somebody said you got 72 hours to rescind your name in, in a contract no you have any time that you become dissatisfied and no longer wish to partake in whatever is going on you have become unsatisfied therefore it is no longer satisfactory to your now conditions to the conditions as of now when you signed it those were the di those were different conditions as di conditions change you can change your mind you can change your beliefs you can go into court and ask them three questions and it will debunk anything they have against you period they may disagree other people may disagree but in my strong opinion i can guarantee you myself that you go into court and you ask them do i have the right to believe just like you do and anybody else do to believe whatever I wish to believe. No one can answer that with a no. No one. Can I make my own choices? Just as you can make your own choices. No one can answer that as no. If they answer that as no, either one of those is no, then you have to ask them, well, what gives you that authority? What gives you the authority to tell me I can't believe what I wish to believe? What gives you the authority that tells you that says I can't make up my own choices? And then that third question is do I have the right to change my mind at any time for any reason? Does this ha pertain to a car that blew up shortly after purchasing it with removing the repo? When it comes to products um, that's what that 72 hours thing is about. If you, is if, um, you become dissatisfied with a product within a certain amount of time claimed within the contract, it has to be claimed within the contract. Otherwise it's generally 72 hours. And that's what's uh, known as the lemon law. They will say that you have the right, you're able to have a psych exam too, but you have the right to choose who you have that psych exam from. Now, if you want to get stupid about it, I'll go get 10 psych exams, and then you can go ahead and get your 10 psych exams. How's that? How about we really up the game? You want a, you want a psych exam? Let's do 10 each. Let's do 10 each. You get any of your state reps to do 10 psyche evals on me and I'll go get 10, 10 people of my own private choosing to get 10 psyche evals on me and then we'll present the information. How's that for your fucking psyche evals? Yeah, and that's and that's all it is. Uh, the, the full disclosure thing is one of the biggest things when it comes to these contracts. Um, when, when, when you sign your name to register your kids for school and then you decide that you want to um, um, homeschool them and they give you some kind of guff, 
Um, excuse me, people, but there was no full disclosure. I had to learn it on my own. You didn't come out right out and tell me when I signed and registered my child for school that I, that I, was I aware of these other options. You didn't, you didn't tell me when I signed the insurance papers for my automotive, uh, automobile insurance that I had other options for coverage, such as a surety bond, a private surety bond. See, they don't want you doing this private stuff. They want you out in the public. So every public document there is, there is something that is discrepatory that you can claim that wasn't fully disclosed. They're too ambiguous. With 8 million codes, statutes, rules, regulations, acts, edicts, ordinances, proclamations, declarations, this and that, there is no way you could know it all. And they expect they expect you to. So when you do a contract, everything in that contract has to be fully disclosed. And that includes your right to do things on the private side. That Do you understand this is a public contract? And in this public, public contract, you are held to these terms. These terms are, for a period of time... Oh, sorry. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I, I can't stick to that. They change the regulations, school regulations, and all of a sudden you're dissatisfied with the uh, new ruling that um, everybody has to wear a certain kind of clothing. I'm sorry, I have to remove my kid from my school because that's not one of my beliefs. Do I have the right to make that choice? Yes. Do I have the right to change my mind because you changed the regulation? Yes. Fuck them and their public bullshit. Understand this stuff, people. You want to take... Your, your, your uh, authority over, you have to step up to the responsibility of pointing this stuff out to them. Excuse me, you can't point it out to them if you're sitting at home, on the couch, eating your potato chips, and telling your, your, your woman to, hey, go fix dinner and, and make sure the kids are doing their homework. You have to be involved yourself. You have to turn that fucking TV off, and when the cops are pulling up down pulling up down the street, get your fucking video out and videotape these motherfuckers and hold them accountable to your neighbors as well. Because just like I've stated before, when they're done and you go back inside and sit down and start watching the TV again, it affects you not one bit. Unless you let it affect you. And if you're gonna let it affect you, let it affect you in the positive manner. To step up to the plate and take responsibility. He may not be your son down the street, but he's your brother. He's your sister. He doesn't have the same skin color, but he's your brother or your sister. He doesn't have the same beliefs. He doesn't make the same choices, but he's your brother or sister. Start standing up and take responsibility so that when you can't, when you're old and feeble and you can't, your younger generation that you've taught can help out their brothers and sisters. Yes, Andy, we are the authority. People, people don't understand that the state doesn't get its authority from anybody but us. And if they're doing what they're doing, it's because we're not standing up to our authority. We're not standing up and saying, fuck you. Fuck them. This is my choice. They don't understand that. Make them understand it. The more we get to the point where we realize that the sovereign powers come from the individual the more we understand the collective powers of each individual put together is the true power you think all these thousands of people that are in this government or in position of holding seats of government have power they don't the millions of us, like us, all we have to do is step up. Once we step up, and then they understand us. 
but until we get off of that couch and stand eye to eye, they'll never you'll never get to the point of them understanding you. What else? Yes, that's what I, I, I talk about cognitive dissonance all the time. Get away from these fucking processed foods and the and the commercialized TV and, and all this shit that comes to you in the mail and everything. All these offers and the casinos go out there to, out to the casino and, and it's ding, ding, ding. You got all kinds of lights, bells and whistles and everything to, to excite the mind. You want to excite the mind? Excite it with education. Thanks, Noble. I appreciate that. I, I wish um, I wish more people would see that in others, not just myself, because I'm not the only one out here um, putting this stuff out. But I stand strong in it. I don't care what anybody says about anything, because it is not me, it is not mine, it is not proper to me. What is proper to me is right here and now, in my presence. Period. Nothing else. Even you aren't proper to me, brother. Even though I call you brother, you're not proper to me because you're not right here. In this now, in this space. But through that limbic resonance, I feel your connection. And, and if people would learn more about that too, that's a big one. I don't know how many of you out there get into the chakras and the limbic resonances and, and, and vibrations and and the, the, the Hertz 432 and this and that, 440. Some people argue 432 and 440. Um, myself, I think it's closer to 432. And, and, and uh, in fact, I think it's closer to 436. I'm not sure. But it's within that range. And the closer you get within that range, the, the better you feel. I, like, I love listening to music in 432. So think about this stuff. And, and when you get it, Again, like I said, don't sit on the couch eating your, your potato chips and telling other people what to do. Um, the only way we keep what we have is by giving it away. So once you learn it, start teaching it. The teacher is a, is an, is a student and the student is a teacher. It's the only way we keep it is by giving it away. And the only way we got it is because somebody else gave it to us. I got it through all the indoctrination and, and couldn't figure out why it wasn't working for me. <laughs> if I'm so well indoctrinated into understanding finances and law and this and that, how come it isn't working for me? Because there's more to it than that. You have to understand it's not just about the way it works. It's about how you work it. It's about how you do it. It's about what's proper to you. And if you want to be a beneficiary, then you got to step up and be and take responsibility to, to gain those benefits. Again, I'm going to refer to, to uh, Genesis 1, um, chapters 26 through 28, wherein God gave man dominion over the land, the air, and the water. L-A-W, law, land, air, water. But the only way you can be a benefit to that, or benefit of that, is to comprehend it, be cognitive of it. Be cognitive of the fact that natural foods are healthy for you and processed foods are going to kill you. Be cognitive of the fact that your homeopathways include and it's a necessity CBD oils All of your um, lymph nodes, your glandular system, your homeopathways depend on understanding your dominion over the land, air, and water. It's the only way you're going to exist within the reality that we have today under that concept. Now, and, and understand, I, I give everybody their own peace. I give everybody their own belief and their own choices. So that being my choice to believe in that spirituality is mine. You don't if you've got some other way then then be so be it. Please. As long as it reaches to the same means of getting rid of the corruption. 
So anyway, I've made this one uh, long enough. I hope you understand the uh, the construct of the trust and how it works in in, in particular regards to the uh, CQ View Trust, uh, which is a dual trust, uh, dual, tr dual trustee, co-trustee, and co-beneficiary. Uh, it's, I believe it's the only trust that I know of that has those positions. Every other one, you have the liable party, you have the beneficial party, and you have a trustee determining which is which. So, understand that stuff and realize that you are supposed to take the top position. One way or another, you're supposed to take the top position in the name. Not of the trust, but in the name. The name is where it sits. If they have developed a trust with your name, then you take care of that name and say, okay, now I collapse this trust because I no longer wish to be part of it. I rescind my name. I don't have a signature to rescind, but it, I am rescinding my name from this public charitable trust, which it is a part of. That's how you collapse it. Set off all the debts, assign your fiduciaries to set off all the debts, and collapse that fucker. Or you can, like I said, durable power of attorney, in fact, and now position that from the public charitable trust into your own private family trust. One way or the other, you have to step up into that upper spot. Otherwise, if you're sitting here and, and they ask you if you understand them, you say, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. When you step up and you see eye to eye, you tell them, no, I don't understand you because the way I see it is this. This is my belief and this is my choice. Now, at the time, it was this, but I've changed my mind. I've grown. I've educated myself. My beliefs have changed. They're now here. Do you understand me? Use those words against them. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Bullshit! They're not running courts of law. They're running courts of administration. You have the right to an attorney. Yeah, you have a right to an attorney and I reserve all of my rights, meaning I have a right to power, durable power of attorney, in fact. Now fuck off with your, your power of attorney and start doing as I tell you or else. I'll hold you accountable according to the law. Not your administrative bullshit, but to the law. Understand this stuff and you can go into courts and talk to them just like that. Because that's the way I talk to them. I go in and just on a test, I'll go into an open order hour and just sit there with my hat on. While the court attendant tells me, sir, you take your hat off. No thanks, I'm alright. Sir, you got to take your hat off. No thanks, I'm alright. And then third or fourth time, she finally gets frustrated. Goes out to the, the out, outer room and calls the judge in. Judge comes flying in. Take your hat off in my courtroom. Excuse me? It's your courtroom? Yes, take your hat off, sir. Um, can you show me delegation of authority? If you don't remove your hat, I'll call the sheriff and have you arrested. Okay. I sit there and wait for the sheriff. <laughs> Three minutes later, that sheriff finally arrives. Would you have me? Would you like me to place him in cuffs? No, just remove him. <laughs> you fucking ignorant fucks. That's what they are. And all you got to do is step up to that authority and show them you know who you are. You know what they can and can't do. Now granted, they removed me, and I let them remove me because I was being disruptive in his courtroom. And it was not my courtroom. And he is it, it, though it's a public courtroom, somebody else paid for the venue for that courtroom, not me. I could be there in the spectator's galley all I want, but I have to do what they tell me. But if it's my court, and I'm the one bringing the claim, they better do what I'm going to tell them. Because I now have the information. I now have the knowledge. I've now changed my beliefs. And I now make different choices. So understand this stuff. And, and realize that you don't understand a goddamn thing they're saying to begin with. Because you don't even understand yourself. Learn who you are. Step up into the right spot. And start delegating your authority. And the only way you can been, can, can benefit from anything in this life is by doing that. Otherwise, other people are going to abuse you and say, okay, here's your benefit. Here's your bowl of porridge when you could be eating steak. And that's what you believe. 
That's what you believe. You believe that bowl of porridge is your benefit and you start slopping it up. You're worth so much more if you just understand it. If you, if you become cognizant of it. <laughs> hey, Matt, you got to start doing this yourself, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm 120 pounds soaking wet, dude. And granted, there was a time when I was a bit bigger. I went into prison when I was 19 years old at 120 pounds. I walked out three and a half years later, 185 pounds. The institutional uh, institution there did me some good. But it took me another fucking 20-some years to start understanding what was really happening. I never went back to prison. I've been to jail many times. But gradually, as I learned and progressed... Um, it, it's coming to a higher understanding. I started understanding things and then I got to a higher understanding and a higher understanding and a higher understanding and a higher. And you got to do the same thing, brother. I hope so. You got to step up. Because it's, it's like when I just said a little bit ago, when you see them down the street, their sirens going and their lights flashing, get up off that couch, turn the TV off and go out there with your camera. The more I do it, the more my neighbors will do it as well. And then we're no longer doing it alone with one cop amongst several sitting there going up to you and trying to grab your phone. You now have maybe four or five cops and 30 neighbors all out there with, the, with their cameras. What are they going to do? Take all of them? I don't think so. They're going to start thinking about how they behave. Same with these administrators in court. The more people that go into these courts like myself and are willing to sit there and say, fuck you, that are willing to sit there and say, no, I will not take my hat off. Make me. The more of us that are willing upon release from jail, get this, people, when they released me from jail and they tried to hand me this contract for $4,800 for my stay at their nice facility, I said, okay, here, here's my hands. You go ahead and feel free to try to put that hand or that pen in my hand and make me sign that to make it a valid document because I refuse to and that's my choice. Now, if you have authority over my choice, then you show me your authority over my choice and make me sign that paper. Here you go. What are you going to do? Hold me? What are you going to do? Keep me in jail? It's already court ordered to release me. All you got to do is understand what's going on. And, and when, when you realize you are the true creditor, not in the commercial world. Not in the commercial world, but in the physical world that was given unto us, that we were brought unto. And again, Genesis 1, 26 through 28, we were given dominion. We, you want to talk about this admiralty law and then the law of the sea and everything. Fuck that. I'll use it. But in fact, in fact, you better understand me because in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, I was given dominion over the land, air, and water. Who are you the fuck to restrict that? No one. No one. If you can restrict the air I breathe, then do so. If you can, can restrict the, bot, the water that can, that's contained within my body, then do so. If you can restrict the nutrients that my body requires to be sustainable, then do so. And that's what it comes down to. Period. Plain and simple. And if you want to keep letting them restrict, them, restrict you, then you do so. That's your own cognitive dissonance. But the more you educate yourself on this trust, and that's what it is, God gave us a trust. He put us in a trust position of being liable and beneficial and as trustees. There's no other man that can claim that in a fictional entity because it's all fiction. But in reality, we are the trustee, we are the liable party, and we are the benefactor. That's the trust that was given to us under Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Land, air, and water. That's the trust. Mm -hmm. Understand this stuff, people.
In the meantime, God bless you. I love you all. Have a great day. Peace out.